Hello, this is Dana, and welcome to the Orchid Hut. Thank you for taking some of your time today to watch this video about an orchid in trouble, sadly. Well, let me give you a little bit of a background here. First of all, the orchid's name. It's a um, Cattleya cerulea type, gorgeous bloom. I'll put a picture up on the screen. And this was one of the orchids that I treated myself to last October for my birthday. And it was doing so well. And it spent the winter under the grow lights and um, started putting on a new growth, which is this growth right here. And then when it came spring, I moved all of my cattleyas outside, and then something knocked this pot over. And I found it laying on the ground one morning, and it had come out of its pot. And I think I may have initially repotted it at a time that was not ideal, because this new growth wasn't putting out roots yet. And then when it fell out of its pot, it has just never been the same since. So this is now turned into a rescue situation. You can tell the older leaves are really beginning to get dehydrated. And just recently I've noticed the new leaves showing some signs of dehydration. And it did attempt to put out a few new roots right down here. But I think ever since this fell out of the pot, um, the root system has just continued to fail. So we're going to try to save this one. It may be a long shot, but hey, you know, we all lose orchids. Um, it's perfectly natural for these kinds of things to happen. You repot it at the wrong time, and then you put an accident on top of that, and the orchid just becomes too stressed. So we have to look at this as a learning experience. You know, give it a try, see if we can pull it through, and then when we will feel really successful. If for some reason it just continues to die, well, sometimes that happens, but still, you know, it's a learning experience for your orchid growing hobby. So what we're gonna do today is take this one out of this pot, out of this bark, even though it's only been in here a few months, and we're going to set it up in another pot with some added moisture. And um, I think I will be keeping it indoors so that it doesn't have the stress of the heat outside. And I will put it in a place that has a bit more humidity, uh, likely putting the whole thing in a gallon bag so that um, you know it has a chance to kind of retain moisture a little bit better. Okay, so let's see. It had such a good root system when I repotted it the first time. And it had been doing well. And then all of a sudden, this. All of these roots are mushy. Every single one. There's not a single root here that has any substance left to it. The entire root system has failed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just cut it away. And this is, you know, not, not ideal, but this root system is not going to support this plant. There may be one tiny little root right there alive, but that cannot sustain this plant. It's also dead. Now, you know, if you have a dehydrated orchid and there's a root system, you know, you can give it a tea soak and it will rehydrate itself because it has a method to take in the water. But this does not have a way to take in the water. 
because there is no root system to speak of. So we're going to have to figure out how to give this a little bit of, it, of encouragement. Because if it does not produce roots, it will definitely be a goner. All right, let's see what's left. Oh, that's also dead. This one as well. And I don't want to really leave any of these dead roots if I can help it because, you know, that will just continue to cause whatever is around the rest of the roots trying to survive. It will just cause them to further decline. Okay, now the rhizome here I'm going to leave because there is some energy and moisture left in even the wilted leaves. The good news is, is that I'm not seeing any signs of rot or fungal problems or bacteria problems, although we will be giving it a good spray with hydrogen peroxide just to be certain. And I'm just really being pretty picky here about cutting away all of the dead roots. Okay, so the only thing alive is this little root right here off of this new growth. One little tiny root bud which looks like it has stalled as well as the one that did grow a tiny bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and remove this dry sheath from the pseudo bulb so that in the event it wants to send out some roots a bit higher up. You know, they're not um, blocked by that sheath that's hanging on so tightly. I'm going to do this for the next one. I don't know if an older pseudo bulb can send out roots, but if it can, I'm going to give it the best opportunity by removing some of that dry material. There is a tiny little bud right here. Not quite sure what will happen with that. Okay, so I am going to clean up this mess, go uh, off camera, give this a very quick rinse, spray it with 3% hydrogen peroxide, and then I'll be back to um, show you the setup that this one will get, and uh, we'll cross our fingers for a recovery. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so the orchid has had a rinse and uh, it has been sprayed with 3% hydrogen peroxide. The wetness that's left is just water because once the hydrogen peroxide does its thing, it just leaves behind water. And the next thing that we're going to do is talk about putting this in a situation to encourage it to do some root development. Now I could have reused the old pot, but I just didn't take time right now to clean it, which I would have wanted to do before putting this orchid back in that same pot, just in case there was something in there that was causing the roots to fail. So I'll do that old pot cleanup later. And in the meantime, what I've taken is really not even an orchid pot. Uh, guacamole came in this. No, not guacamole. Queso with green chilies. So I oftentimes save plastic containers like this just for this purpose. It doesn't have any drainage or aeration holes, but I'm going to be very careful with the moisture for this orchid, so that really uh, doesn't matter for this purpose. And it's a temporary setup. The orchid is not going to stay in here as soon as I see some good root development. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is put a tiny little bit of sphagnum moss in the bottom, and we want this to be loose because there does have to be um, air in the pot as well. 
and we don't need to be concerned about filling it up all the way to the top and doing it in a pretty way because once again this is just temporary and what I did with this sphagnum moss is I dampened it and then I sprayed it with this half bottle which is let's see 16 ounces of distilled water and I mixed in a couple of drops of Super Thrive just to give this orchid a little bit extra boost to encourage root development. So before I put the orchid in, and I've sprayed the sphagnum moss with the solution as well, but I'm also going to be spraying the bottom of this orchid with this mixture of distilled water and a few drops of Super Thrive. And every once in a while, I will put just one drop of Super Thrive in a gallon of water for the rest of my orchids. This is mixed up slightly stronger. And then we're just going to rest this in here. I'm going to rest the orchid here and then just fill in with the sphagnum moss and pack it down just tightly enough so that the orchid doesn't lean too much. But if it leans a little bit, that's fine. And once again, this is not, you know, meant to be pretty, it's meant to be functional. Okay, so um, the goal here will be to make sure that this sphagnum moss does not dry out. And I'm going to give it another light spray on top. And then I'm going to put the entire pot, after I put the tag back, I'm going to put the entire pot inside a plastic bag. Now this makes like a little greenhouse for it, a little humidity chamber. Okay, make sure it's still positioned in a good way. Okay. And now what I will do is um, place this in a room that has a bit more humidity. During the day, I'm going to seal up the bag with just a little bit of a space for transpiration to take place. And at night, I will open up the bag a bit more and then reseal it during the day. Um, every once in a while, I will be poking around in that sphagnum moss at the top to see if I see any new root development. And from time to time, if it needs um, a little bit of extra moisture inside the bag, I have uh, the bottle already mixed up to give it a quick spray. Okay, so I will report back on this orchid, probably in one of my uh, orchid medley chit chat videos to let you know how it's doing and if this worked or if it didn't work, I'll let you know either way. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so that you can uh, know when I've posted something new. And of course, subscribing is free. That's great as well. Talk to you next time.